All right, everyone, welcome to our children's self-defense. Let's go ahead and move into our stretches and go to our workout. Ready, hands on your hips. Oh, sorry, hands feet together. Set. Make sure you're in the shot. You're not in. I can see. There you go. Now, Wipe the back. Wipe the back. Stay. No. You keep the dust in your feet. You walk with the back. Stop. Back. See your left foot? Stay flat. Everything's fine. Get back to the Yep. Hands on your hips. Rotate your head.
Drop your arms. Spread feet out almost as far as you can. Start rocking back. Nice and slow descent. Almost sit down, not all the way. Now you can hold yourself up on your calves, just like we did the other classes. Okay. Ready? Ten seconds and go. And roll forward onto your chest, full split. Down by your hips. Ready, push your torso up. Squat variations. 
So Joe and Self Defense class means we're going to talk a lot about how to keep yourself safe and alive in a situation where you may be at risk. For instance, kidnapping, being attacked on the streets, anything of that sort. So let's get all of our talking points out of the way and then we'll move forward with the actual physical lesson. Come on over here, buddy. Center stage facing towards the class. So let's remember the basics. Kimberly, they have a rule for keeping space in the class of self-defense. What is that rule called? The one half rule. What does that also mean? gym, each block has a width of three feet. That gives you an adequate amount of time to see what the other person's doing before they can really lean in and grab you. You have a chance to step back. It's also longer than most people's arm reach. So if I lean in without moving, I can't just grab you. You have a chance to move. So the three foot rule, one block rule, or arms length away at all times from every person you don't trust. Or if you're in a situation where you're feeling safe around numerous people, try and stay away from all of them as best you can. Kimberly, go and stand up. Stay a little closer. You're right there, actually. Face towards me. So if I'm someone you don't trust and I'm walking towards you, what should you do? Come a little more towards the center. So if I step forward, go back up. Right? Kind of maintain that space. Let's say I step forward again. What do you do? You back up again. Now, the reason why we say back up twice is you don't know where I'm going. I don't necessarily have to be dangerous. I just be giving you bad feelings. That's that feeling you get in your stomach. Kind of like when you know you did something wrong or about to get in trouble in school or with your parents. So it's that gut reaction saying, this is bad. That's the feeling you're looking for when you see someone you may not trust or may feel safe around. So, this next time, come back to the center. Come back to the center. Now let's imagine she's already backed up twice and I'm still coming forward. What should you do? Say it louder. Step to the side. Step to the side. So if I come forward again, you step to the side. Now that's because I may just simply walk in past her. I may have business in what's behind her. She doesn't necessarily know I'm dangerous. But here's the final tip. If I walk towards her again, so she steps to the side now. If I come forward again, so, so forward, step to the side. But now I change directions. Right there. You don't wait around anymore. You book it. You run away as fast as possible. Just a notification. Come on. So do a more better, do a better demonstration of this whole thing. So come forward a little bit and stop. Just run off to the side. Oh, you get time. So first time she backs up. Second time she backs up. Third time she goes to the side. If I turn to face her, she leaves. She runs away. You can hear her stomping the mats in the background. So the reason why, again, you're stepping back is because you don't know whether I'm dangerous or not exactly. You may just be getting a bad feeling from me. So you're making space to get away. If I keep following you, if I'm persistent, then for sure run away. Don't stick around there anymore. Your best defense, especially as a child, is to simply run away and leave. Okay, now let's try this. Turn around. Turn around. I know you have the camera. I know you have the camera. We have an exercise in the class. Just close your eyes. We have an exercise in the class where what happens is I pretend to be the uh, stranger, the bad guy, the kidnapper, and I'm trying to sneak up on her. Her job is to trust that reaction in her stomach. And so the moment she hears a noise, something sounds wrong, maybe pressure in the ground behind her, she'll quickly raise her hand and stop me from approaching. So just a quick demonstration, ready to close your eyes, the trust you, I know the cameras are right there. Does that make sense? Okay, ready? Here we go. And just before it's too late, right? It's that feeling in your belly yet again when you feel something is wrong, when you know you're about to get in trouble, you have guilt, but instead of guilt, it's your uh, anxiety, your stress response. It's that feeling of, oh, I don't like that, that makes me feel bad. So, again, learn to trust your gut instincts, your feelings. You have them for a reason, they'll keep you safe. Kimberly, you can go and take a seat again. Now, other talking points. Your response to saying safe in an altercation. What is the best thing you can do? Situational awareness. Situational awareness. Okay, sure. We'll get to the next event. So, situational awareness. When you're walking around out and about in life. So, let's say you're walking home from school.
school, you have your usual cab, which is about 10 minutes long. It's full of cars, it's full of neighbors you see all the time. People know you walk home from school that way. Or you found a new shortcut. It looks like it's about seven minutes long. And I say that because you can see your house at the end of the alleyway, which is our new shortcut. But it's dark, there's lots of hiding places in there, and you've never gone down there before. No one's there to see you either. Is it safer to take the longer route or the shorter route? Yes? The longer route. Okay, tell us why. child, student, an adult, whoever, do me a favor. If I'm looking at my opponent right here, actually, I'm going to pivot on my feet, and I'm going to quickly shake them until I can get enough far away enough from that other person. Shake meaning run. I'm not going to stay there. I'm not going to fight them. I fight in the cage. I wouldn't sit there and have a street fight with somebody else. I don't know if he's got buddies hanging around, he's got weapons on him. I don't know if he's in his right mind. You just don't. Leave. That's the best thing for you. Especially as a child, you don't know what this other kid's doing. You don't know why he's fighting you, most likely. You don't know if his buddies are hanging around waiting to hit you, or her, or her friends. And you don't know whether they have a weapon or not. I don't care if it's in school. You don't know. So run away. Find an adult who can come and help you. Find security. Do you have security at your own school? There is. So you have people to go to. All right, let's try this. Kimberly, let's say you're at a park with friends. You block your bike at the bike rack. Somebody comes over, you see them trying to steal your bike. Child, adult, it doesn't matter. What do you do? Call the police. Walk, walk away and call the police or tell them they're an adult. Correct. Go get security. Or call the police or find someone who can help you. It's not your job and the child to deal with that situation. It may make you mad. You may get angry that that dude's trying to steal your bike. But at the end of the day, they have to weigh their options. They're thinking to themselves, is, it, is this bike worth going to jail? Well, yeah, I want this bike. And so they're looking at that, whoever that might be, who it might belong to, and they're probably willing to hurt you to avoid going to jail. Don't get involved. Nothing you own will ever be more important than your body, okay? Nothing. Not your shoes, not your keys, wallet, phone, I don't care. If someone walks up to you and threatens you with a knife or a gun for your phone or keys, it doesn't matter, give it to them. Give it to them. They can be replaced, it can be found, anything can happen, but you can't get your life back. So especially if you're a child, if you're being threatened with a weapon, or if you're I've seen your stuff being stolen, give up whatever they're asking for. Now, there's a very specific case. Do you have a question? Do you have a question? Okay, ask I believe I know what you're going to say to this one, but what if you do give them the stuff and they say get the car? That's where I'm going. So you just, how about the future? Wait, because that's not really a question you need an answer to. That's a leading question. I am. No, what I'm telling you is that what you asked was a leading question. You're saying because you're trying to guide me in a specific direction. Just wait, if I miss it, then bring it up. Anyway, she is right. The only time that is not okay is if they're asking for your body, which means if they're holding you a knife point or gun point saying, hey, get in the car. 
hey, come with me, hey, whatever, uh, run right away. Because I'm not going to lie to you, getting shot or stabbed is far better than whatever awaits you if you go with them. Don't get in their car. Don't stay in the car and let them come in. If they're trying to carjack you, get out, let them take it, let them leave. Don't let them come in with you. Don't go into theirs. Don't go with them from a park. Don't with, go with them from a school. Yeah. If you give them all your stuff and then they say, okay, also get in the car, ditch your stuff, run away, who cares? It's not worth it, it's not worth your life. So don't do that. If it's your stuff, give it up. If it's yourself, no. Run, bite, scream, kick, get away, I don't care. If you get shot or stabbed, again, it's better than what awaits you if they take you physically. So don't go. All right, let's go ahead and time is 38. Let's break for some water and go over our physical lessons. Not long now, we took a long break. Just a sip. Because in reality, up, what I'm doing, I'm not 
come here. He said, I'm trying to pass. So you have to very quickly be able to move your feet around. Because if I'm deciding to attack you, I'm going to give it my all. I'm not going to half it, because I'm going to go to jail as the attacker. I'm trying to hurt you. I'm trying to pass it and knock you out so I can kidnap you. A lot simpler that way. So you got to do everything you can to keep me off your back. Now, another thing you can do in your greatest weapon when it comes to being attacked by an adult is using your voice. Calling and yelling fire, yelling to call the police, calling to, that you're being kidnapped. Look at somebody, make eye contact, say call 911. I don't know this person. This is not my mom. This is not my dad. All of these phrases. Now, what's something you shouldn't say? Help. Why? As a group of people, we sometimes fall into herd mentality, which means we don't quite think for ourselves. So if I see someone being attacked, I rush in, but let's say I'm around 50 other people. I could think, oh, that guy's gonna do it, I don't have to. Or I may think, I don't wanna help, that looks very uh, dangerous and stressful, I need to keep myself safe. I'm gonna pretend that it didn't happen, which is what a lot of people do sadly. What's another thing? Meaning, do you have your hands up? Do you have an example or a question? Save it. Do I have one more thing to talk about? Save the question. Okay. okay. But you need to make eye contact with those people. Look at them directly and say, hey, I'm being kidnapped. And you need to say it concisely. If you start screaming wildly, no one's going to pay attention because then you seem like a brat. But you already look like a stubborn child, especially if it's a woman trying to kidnap you. Because then they can just say, oh, my child's being a brat, they've, they've been off for a few days, they're being emotional, and you can get kidnapped like that. They can just pretend that you're theirs. So you have to be very clear what you say, not just yelling, help me, but I'm being kidnapped. I don't know this person, call the police. Very specific. Okay, go ahead. Oh, no. I'm not going to teach I'm not going to put on anything I don't want them doing at home. So again, the yelling is something you can work on with your parents, but perhaps in a more closed environment because if you start yelling, call 911, I don't know this person, your neighbors might try and come over and solve the situation themselves. Uh, but in any case, nicely done today. Kimberly, go ahead and sit up. Are we done already? Yep, that's it. We're going to be going over our, list, our uh, tenants now. Real quick, Kimberly, go ahead and list them off. Courtesy. class.